Hi, everyone. Welcome to Beacons the Balance. Here we are again. Our episode is on animal communication, and I'm here with Linda, and this is Vanessa Graziano, who is with Yap Communication. Vanessa has been a professional animal communicator for 10 years and began training in 2005 after a profound experience talking with her dog, Theo, by a widely respected animal communicator who eventually became her mentor. She completed a one-year intensive apprenticeship under the mentor in 2013 and gained experience talking with a variety of animals, including dogs, cats, horses, pigs. <laughs> oh, God. I love, I love bacon. Don't tell them that. <laughs> uh, goats, donkeys, rabbits, chickens, wild dolphins. And while on a retreat in the, while it, you spoke to wild dolphins when you were on a retreat in the Bahamas. Yes. Yeah. Incredible. Through Amazing. this training, Vanessa realized that every species has something to say and many have much to teach humans. Isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. Vanessa holds a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration from Arizona State University and a Certificate of Advanced Study from the University of Denver Graduate School of Social Work in Animals and Human Health. She has taught humane education to at-risk youth to promote, emphasize compassion, respect, <laughs> empathy, and self-esteem through canine behavior train and training and has been a volunteer with the service dog organization Canine Companion since 2004. Wow, that's impressive. It's been fun. It's hey. been a lot of fun. We've raised a lot of puppies in our years. <laughs> oh, I love the puppies. Wow. Wow, that's that's amazing. Anyway, so where where do we begin? So how do you begin as Tell us a little bit about your background, how this came to be. I know I read a little overview, but did you start like when you were a child? You know, I am not one of those people who say, oh, I just always talked to animals when I was little and I could always hear them. It came to me later in life when I had that profound experience with my dog, Theo, who was here behind me. He was my heart dog, my heart and soul. And uh, my sisters bought me a gift certificate to talk with an animal communicator. And so I got on the phone with her, not knowing what it was, what it was all about, just to have some fun. And she just blew me away with the information she was telling me. There was no way she could have known that unless she was actually talking with my dog. So that really piqued my interest. And I started taking classes from her and it just kind of grew from there and realized like, oh yeah, this is my thing. I can, uh, you know, helping people connect with their animals um, so that they can come to a better understanding, have a deeper connection. Um, it's really been an amazing journey. You said you speak to different animals, right? I'm sure before um, the pandemic, people were, you know, I, I think with all businesses, you were able to go out and do one-on-one -on -one, things like that. I don't, did you do that or has it always been through um, via a Zoom or something like that without seeing the actual person and their animal? Yeah, um, I used to, during, definitely during my apprenticeship and my training, I did a lot of in-person, one-on-one or group with the person and the animals, and then certainly more before the pandemic. But I really do everything online now, really just on the telephone. And I have uh, the person send me a picture of their animals. And the reason why that works, a lot of people are like, how can that work when you're not seeing the animal is because this is a, it's an energetic exchange of information, right? It's telepathic communication. So it's, it's communication without words. And I connect with the animal through the love they share with their humans. And how I explain it to people is even if you're on vacation and you're not with your dog, you still love them and you still miss them and that's still there. And so you don't have to be physically present with them to love them. And I don't have to be physically present with them to tap into that love. So yeah, I, I just have people send me a picture. I actually prefer that too, because what happens for me is when I get into a room with a cute dog or a cute cat or amazing horse, I get all like, oh my gosh, you're magnificent, you're beautiful, and I get in my head. And to do this work, I need to really get out of my head and settle into my heart because that's where I can hear the animals. That's where all the work, all the energy work comes from, even with the human. But you know, we all know that it drops from your head into your heart, and you're the conduit. Um, mm -hmm. I've heard that from other animal communicators. I guess that's kind of the norm. Is it's almost they don't want you don't want to be one on one you know, proxy. I mean, you could do that. Of course, I'm sure you do that, but it's actually better when they're away 
and yeah. um, you're doing it long distance and so forth, you know. I get too um, wrapped up in the cute little puppy and come sit on my lap and I run and rub your belly and yeah. <laughs> but do they love us as much as we love them? Oh my gosh, they do. They do, Linda. And I will tell you, I have one client. This is so fun. Every time I talk to her and I talk to her often, she says, you know, everybody says, please tell them, you know, I love them. I love them so much. And animals give that message back to their humans in different ways. Sometimes it's actually, oh, I love you too. Or sometimes it's a picture of something. And so I'll describe that, like their heart getting really bigger or a feeling I get, like I get really warm and loving. But I have this one client who has a really tough animal who will never actually say it back to her. He kind of makes her not want to work for it, but He's a, he's a really amazing teacher. So we try every time, you know, oh, she really loves you. You know, what do you want to say back? And I always get something different from him and it's really fun. But yes, absolutely. They definitely love us as much as we love them. Linda, have you, have you had any animal communicator with your, she has two beautiful puppies. <laughs> I've got Labradoodles. Yeah. Ah, love them. And you know what? I love them. I heard they're quite affectionate. They're over affectionate. They sit and stare at me all day. They'll follow me into the bathroom. They follow me everywhere. Their whole life depends on me. And Do you hear, them? Do you hear what they have to say? To no, you? but I should make an appointment with you and find out what they have to say. Well, I will tell you, it's a lot harder. I don't, I don't talk to my own animals. It's a lot harder. And it's because we're in our head about it, right? Like yes. we see them and we're like, oh, you must need to go out or, oh, you must be something. But it's harder for us to, to talk to our own animals for sure. Well, when it's chow time, you know, they start fussing a bit and I'll say, oh, it's chow time. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty obvious. <laughs> so what are the most common things that our animals have to um, say to us? You know, there's several messages. And since you ladies are talking about balance, I kind of thought of the themes around that. Um, you know, just in general, they are such amazing teachers. And they want us to be their eager students. So I would say they, and they often know more what we need than what we need. So as an example, if you're sitting there with your, your computer all day and your cat walks across your keyboard or your dog comes and like nudges you, right? It, immediately you think, oh, you have to go out or, oh, you want a treat, right? But a lot of times they're trying to tell us something we need, like, You've been sitting there too long. You've got to get up, take a walk, get outside, be in nature. And so I tell people when their animals are annoying, annoying them to check in with themselves and like, what is it that you need in this moment? Because they're probably trying to tell you that. So they're such great messengers of bringing our attention to what we need. But I think other messages in general, um, they want us to play more. They want us to have fun. Yeah, they, they love to play. So, right? And they see us being so serious and worrying and they they want us to just to be more playful. So that's definitely a theme. Um, another theme is to be present. Just This is going back to getting out of our heads and door hearts. We spend as humans so much time in our heads, right? Working, worrying, writing our to-do lists, whatever it is. And they just want us to join them and be present. They are they are like the masters in presence. And I hear this a lot from animals who are kind of at the end of their journey. People call and say, you know, I want to know what they want. Do they need, what do they need to be comfortable? Do they need a new bed? Do they need different food? What is it? And oftentimes they say, I just want you to be, just be with me, just be present. So that's another common theme they also really want us to take care of ourselves like we take care of them. Um, we do so much. Linda, you have your dogs. Uh, Arlene, do you have any animals? I didn't even right ask now, you. I don't know. <laughs> uh, right? We put so much effort into yeah. what do they need, taking care of them, worrying about what they need. And they want us to do that same thing for us. They see us doing so much for them. They want us to turn it back on us. Right. Um, and then I think another another common thing I have, I hear them say is, I as I call it, is to, for us to stand in our truth. The way a horse told me one time was to stand in your power and basically like just embrace who we are. Love ourselves for who we are. Don't try to be anybody else. They're amazing teachers of that too, right? They don't try to change. If they're a black golden labradoodle, they're not trying to change themselves to be a yellow labradoodle or change them. <laughs> And they love, I've heard so many times they say to their humans, thank you for just loving me exactly who I am. 
because we don't do that very well with other humans, right? But we can do that with our animals. With our we dogs, yeah. Who they are. And they want us to do that for ourselves too. Do they give you messages that, you know, some people could be like a little neurotic. And um, we've kind of, they we've humanized our pets so much that they're picking up on our diseases and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, definitely they can. And, you know, especially like really sensitive animals. They're, you know, they're just like us in that some are really sensitive, some are really playful. They have their own unique personalities just like we do. So absolutely there are animals who can pick up on, uh, you know, they're kind of a mirror to us in, at times, right? So if we might be having digestive issues, they might then suddenly show up with digestive issues or if we're having anxiety, they may suddenly, you know, develop some anxieties. And so it's, it's great to have a conversation with them at that time too, to tell them that's not theirs to carry. They don't need to do that for their human. What's, you know, and then we can ask the human, what would help you the most? And right. that's, that's a very answer. interesting point. If your pet is picking up or has something it's a time to reflect on yourself or maybe someone in your household who may mm -hmm. have a similar, maybe it's a precursor to tell you this could be happening in your own self. As yeah. a, as a, Cause I heard that, um, you know, the animals are sensitive. If you're going through something, I don't know, Linda, may, you, maybe you could tell yeah, me. I had a lost shell. I know when you were going through like your cancer and that, did your yeah. friend come and like lie next to yeah, the right next area? Me, but before I was diagnosed with cancer, that dog kept trying to put his nuzzle right in my mouth. He was wow. smelling something. Wow. And I remember wow. thinking, what the hell are you doing? He was like, right up into me. And then I, found out I had cancer. Yeah, they yeah. do have pets that do that, right? Yeah, there are like highly trained yeah, animals who who detect, yeah, detect cancer. They were working on dogs that detect COVID. I think they're still working on that. Service animals who are detect uh, diabetes, like when people's blood sugar drop low. Or a seizure low. coming on, yeah. Seizure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just need one that detects worthless men. That's what I need. <laughs> what, what did you <laughs> say? Waste my damn time. You know, I can eat a dog that says, oh, hell no. <laughs> Well, perhaps before you start dating somebody seriously, we'll check in with your dogs and get their Make sure they like them. About it. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's true. They could pick up if they like someone or not. Yeah. The house, right? Right. 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 Kind of nudge them out. Or... <laughs> but what I find interesting is dogs will go along with no signs of being sick and then you find out they're sick. They're very, right. A lot of animals are very stoic. And again, they have, you know, some are dramatic. Some are a little more dramatic about it. They all have personalities like we do, but I think in general, they are, they are really stoic. And what I found about that is sometimes because they're so good at being present, they don't worry like, oh, my leg hurts. Yeah, my leg hurts, but I'm having so much fun, you know, just laying here with you. Like they're just so present. And a lot of times I find animals just like, disconnect from that part of their body that doesn't feel good. Oh, that leg hurts. Oh, just forget about it. And it's, it's really amazing when, you know, a human calls me and says, you know, well, his back end is kind of weak and, and I'll check in with his body. I said, what do you want to tell me about your back end? He's like, back end, what back end? I don't, I don't have a back end. I'm like, well, are you still, um, you know, are you still enjoying life? Yeah, everything's great. So they just, they're, they're good examples for us too. I think in that way of, trying to be present and not dwelling in in the the suffering, I guess I'll call it. Right. Well, I heard that when dogs sort of hide or go to different places to lay down and sleep, sometimes that's a sign. And all of a sudden, Lulu started going in the boys' bathroom to, to lay down a, out over there. And I thought, I wonder what's... Then I took her in for an appointment and she had actually two cracked teeth down to the to the nerve, which probably was causing her great pain. And fortunately, that's what it was. We had them removed. She's acting fine now. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be nice if they just be like, hey, hello. Yeah. Hello. I, I'm hurting. But see, what she did is she just went in the bathroom. Yeah. And hey, can, can you share with us like a story, you know, something, one of the episodes you had with one of your client, clients, the animals or whatever, that even gave you a big, aha, <laughs> it surprised you. <laughs> I do. I have a few. And, you know, a lot of this is what's cool about these stories is like, 
it's the aha for the humans, but then also it's validation, right? I think for all of us who do this kind of work, it, as you mentioned at the, the beginning, Arlene, right? We have, there's people who are skeptical and I get it. I mean, when I started this, I was like, what is this? I don't know what it is, but because we're so used to seeing, touching, feeling, right? Something tangible and this work is not that way. And so when you get a validation, it's really cool for you. But it's really amazing for the human too. So there's two stories that come to mind. One is this cat who she was howling, like just howling for no reason. Like they had her checked out at the vet. Everything was fine. And she just was like howling. And she was a funny little character. And I asked her about it. I said, what's, you know, what's going on for you? And she's like, oh, well, I like to hear myself. And I like the acoustics in the house. <laughs> like she was an opera singer. And her, her human said, oh yeah, she goes to the front hall where the ceilings are really high and it like echoes. And so that's where she does most of her howling. And then she went on to say that her family, she was feeling, the reason why the woman called me is because they were bringing a dog into the house and she wanted to make sure like, you know, are you okay with that? And she was a little miffed about it. And she said, you know, I just want to be part of the family. She showed me the family being in matching Christmas pajamas and like, I'm just trying to say what I get. Like that made no sense to me at all. But I'm like, okay, she's showing you matching Christmas pajamas. And she's and the woman said, Yeah, we do wear matching Christmas pajamas, the family. And and I said, She's telling me even the dog has it. And she said, Yep, the dog has the, you know, the matching bandana, but the cat didn't. The cat didn't have any miss. And she said, I want matching Christmas pajamas. <laughs> be part of the family, like everybody Isn't else. That something. It was wow. so funny. Because so I was that, wondering, I was what yeah, I was wondering how they feel about being dressed up. <laughs> Yeah, it depends. Some of them love it. Some of them don't. But she got a Christmas hoodie that year. I got a picture of it. It was really adorable. So that was that was one fun story. And then a little bit a little bit more heartfelt story is there was a woman who called me. Her dog had passed away about three weeks before, and she just wanted to connect with him and um, make sure he was fine and tell him she loved him. Mm -hmm. And as we were talking, he showed me a picture of a closet and he said, I'm always here. You can always call me in the phone booth. And he showed me the picture of the closet. And I said, he's telling me you can call him in the phone, go to the phone booth and, and call him. And she said, oh my gosh, in my closet, my walk-in closet, I have an altar and his picture's on it. And that's where I go and do my oh, meditation. Oh, I just oh got, my God. Oh, I, got big, I got big chills on that one. That I is know. so that's cool. That's confirmation. Wow. It, yeah. That was really that's sweet. incredible. What yeah. incredible. That's fascinating. So it's great to hear those stories. Have animal, I mean, have they said anything as far as what's going on right now? Like, I know it's kind of a weird question to ask about what's <laughs> collectively going on in the world. Or are they even connected to that? I don't know about your dogs, Linda, but they pick up like before a storm's going to come or yes. you know, they're sensitive to that energy. Well, even before we had that earthquake, you could see the dogs start with their tail down, kind of acting weird and then boom. Yeah. yeah, they're definitely in tune with like the energies of what's going on, right? And I would say just like us, some are more, much more in tune with that. And some are just like, I'm here to be a dog and have a great time. But in general, you know, you asked Arlene, do they have any kind of messages for us? I would say that they, what they, they feel since they're connected with us, they pick up on how we're feeling about things, right? So if we're upset over what's going on in the world, they're, they're picking up on that and they're, they're here to help us through that. So it'll be different messages for different people, depending on what their humans need. But those animals who are really sensitive to that and who I call are like old souls, they just, so many times, they just do like a download of wisdom for their human. I have I have one client who I talk to regularly and she has this amazing dog. He's in spirit now, but she tells me, I would rather talk to him than pay my therapist <laughs> because oh, yeah. he gives me so much more insight about what's going on, how I should deal with it. And so I'd say just kind of in general, they can help us with that to help us deal with how we're feeling about what's going on. Wow. I had a, yeah. a dog the other day say he was, he was a dog who was like, his back end was weak. He was like, what back end, whatever. He's still joyful. And she said, oh, you know, he kind of slips and then he gets back up. And he said, oh yeah, metaphor for life. You fall down, you get back up. And he just like kept telling us wisdom. And he said, you humans, you're so, um, you're so resistant to change. There's gifts in change. If you would just embrace change, you'd see the gifts. So it's fun to, to get those kind of messages from them. And they, they just help us. Right. Exactly. 
That's that's wonderful. I had to put uh, Moochie, my Lasho poodle, down. It was very tough on me, and because he couldn't no longer lift his back legs at all, he was crawling, but his mind was still there, and it was it was horrible. But anyway. I got the most beautiful dream, I don't know if people get this, of the dog running towards me just as alive and well. I said, Boochie, oh, my God. And I picked him up and, oh, he smelled so good. And I was hugging him. And I was thinking, wait a second, you're dead. And he had a pink collar on, which was weird, too, because he was a boy. And then I wake up, right? And it was so profound I because I saw that I literally saw that dog in spirit in this house, which this dog was never in. When I brought Lulu home, here comes Moochie down the hallway. And I almost went to say, Moochie, here's your sister. And then I realized, oh, my God, the dog's dead. But what's interesting, probably the pink collar was that I ordered, I went to Oklahoma to get the dog, a Labradoodle that was a female. Wow. That's, oh, so that's she, the reason. So yeah. she was, he was letting me know I was getting a female next. Uh, oh, isn't that, yeah, what a beautiful. And he was dog. mean, by the way. He was a snapper head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he loved me, but if you stood, he'd be happy to see you and what. And if you walked over towards me near my purse or me, he'd attack you. Oh. Well, I had I had a Yorkie and went, I mean, oh God, she was so old. She was 19 when she finally crossed over. She didn't want to leave. I did a whole ceremony. She was in a basket, like a little cat basket. And I smudged. <laughs> People probably think I would go. And I did a whole prayer and I released her. And I said, go with your puppy friends. But when you know, my yard was fenced in, just had white picket fence, which he had spaces. And I was outside the fence talking to the mailman. And she was outside. She was only probably like four pounds. Well, she was so small, she was able to get through the slats. And she came through and her teeth were, they were gone. They brought it out, you know, she, but she still looked like a puppy. And all of a sudden the mailman, he looks down, he goes, what's this? And the, the dog grabbed onto his pant leg <laughs> and she's going, Mur. and and I started laughing. I said, she's just trying. She's trying to protect me. And she's still trying to do what she does. But she had no teeth. She couldn't bite. It was the uh, funniest thing. That is so sweet. It was there, the funniest thing. There is thing. definitely some truth into that. The small dogs think they're big or the oh, big yeah. dogs, the big think they're small. So they want to get on your lap. I mean, you know, we, we talk about that as humans, but I've definitely had, you know, animals tell me like big dogs saying, what do you mean? I can't, you know, get on your lap. I'm just tiny. Like they just aren't even aware of that. How big. Oh, I are. had, I had big dogs that thought they were lap dogs. They would come and jump up on you. And you they're, oh, you're, I know. Like my you're dog. Covered with so them. You're like, covered yeah. going, wait a minute. <laughs> it is funny. That is so, great. Anyways, oh, we, have, we kind of have to wrap up here, but um, thank you so much for sharing everything with us. And we'll put your we'll put all your information down below. Um, I guess everybody could get connect with you through uh, Vanessa. Is that the best way to reach you, Vanessa? At Yap, yap communication dot com. Yep, and then just on my website, which is yapcommunication.com, there's a place to get more information about what I do, kind of some frequently asked questions about what is animal communication, and you can schedule an appointment there also. So that's a good place yeah, to get. It's wonderful, and I guess you cover all the animals, so it doesn't matter what you have, right? It doesn't matter. Reptiles, anything. Yeah, so uh -huh. wow. Okay. Thank you so much for Thank having you. me. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being here with too. us. How's the snow in Colorado? Did it come to you know, it is beautiful today. Uh, okay. We had a huge snowstorm last week, but it's pretty much melted. And um, so I'm I'm just embracing the beauty. I'm going to get out there today. You're okay. in the Denver proper area. Mm -hmm. My sister-in-law is up in the mountains in Blackhawk. She had four oh. feet. She's so she's almost like over. She's been there for years, and this has really put her over the edge. She had four feet, and then they were getting another ten inches on top of it. I mean, oh my gosh. she had and to clear out her yeah. pipe for her furnace. It's oh. come ready to rain here in Northern California. It's, I've never seen anything like it. It's Where raining are you in all the California, time. Linda? Uh, in Sonoma County, near oh. Napa. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. and you're getting a lot of rain. Sorry about yeah. that. We're all connected, all the seas. <laughs> yeah. All the seas. I love it. So anyways, thank you again. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Linda, do you want um, Be the change you want to see. Yes. And from our hearts to thank you, everybody, for, for watching, listening sharing and from our hearts to yours always in 
total love, peace, joy, and balance. If you have inner peace, you have, I always say you have it all, you know, we have yeah. it all. So we just have to remember that. Remember to be in your hearts in love, just love, like our pets do for us, unconditional love. And yeah. right. thank and you. And this guys. is like one of my favorite subjects about animals. I love my animals. Yeah. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Thank you. Right. Take care, Vanessa. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.